So this is part two of my failures and success series that I'm doing with each garden. This is the trellis garden, as you can see over me. Um, these are 16-foot cattle panels. There's five of them, and we just bend them over and then attach them uh, with garden stakes. These are the nice, um, well, posts, I guess is a better word. So, uh yeah, there's a lot of experimenting going on over here. There's a lot more failures, too, for me to share with you. So stay tuned on that. Oh, no. What did we have here? Yikes. I guess the rain and wind. Wait, we didn't have rain and wind. We've had heat and beautiful days. It's been completely dry here. I wonder what did that. Oh my goodness. Yeah. That's what did it. Way too many on there. Even though we just did a massive picking last week. Uh oh. There's a fail. I lost two massive branches because I didn't pick in time. Yeah, always learning out here. This got way too heavy and of course this itself is probably five to six feet from the end, from end to end. See that? Where the bloom was. Oh, those are ready to go. I guess we'll be making jam, too. All right. Lesson number 10,318 learned. This is Quaker Pie Pumpkin. And this has been quite a learning experience for me. I, I just don't think pumpkins do well and I'm forcing something that just doesn't like to grow in Florida. But I'm still not giving up because cold weather's almost here. I had four of these. Two of them are still alive. Uh, they've been heavily, heavily attacked. I put diatomaceous earth down even though I hate doing that. And it managed to come back. So uh, it, then it got a, it was growing well and it got attacked a second time because it got attacked when it was way at the base. Now it's doing, got attacked a second time. I did it a second time. And look, it's coming back a third time. That's new growth right there. Um, if it can just hang, thank goodness it's in the shade. And if it could just hang in there until, you know, through the month it should cool off. Here's its baby blooms. This is Quaker Pie Pumpkin, which is supposed to have a bit of a coconut flavor. With, and there's supposed to be a small baking pumpkin. I don't see any, oh, it's, look, aw. You don't want to let go of your friend? But your friend's not very helpful. He needs to go away. Okay, so it's um, at each node, pumpkins usually put down a root and that's what it's trying to do only this is on the black ground cover do you see all that at it just about every node um, here it didn't for whatever reason who knows you can fill in your own blanks there but um, but yeah it's trying to I don't see any girl blooms yet I don't, uh, I don't really see very well developed boy blooms either so my guess is that that's going to be temperature dependent and as soon as we start going okay I don't know if you guys know about Mike's weather page but go follow him on Facebook if you aren't already he's awesome for hurricanes but you know what else he's awesome for predicting when you're going to get your first cooler nights in Florida he's saying mid we're going to get a little cool snap this week in October but not under 70 degrees and so he's saying the second week of October is when we're going to start going below 70 at night so if this plant can just hang on a couple more weeks I think we got it then we're going to start getting some pumpkins here but this is one of the greatest experiments that I am babying and doing everything I can to make survive I don't know this seems to be the corner of death. I just, well, of course, it's the corner of weeds. No matter how many times I clear it out, it still looks like that. But if we can ever get this thing going, 
I'll be the first to eat that pie. I cannot wait. I can taste it. I want it so bad. So, I don't know if you call this a fail or a success. I guess success, so far, it's survived the heat. But it's a failure in the sense that I'd have no pumpkins yet. But the jury's still out. It's not done, right? It's not over. This is Antigua eggplant. And it's been growing and growing and growing all spring and summer. It is now heading towards four feet. It just took forever and a day to get going. And it had a lot of bug pressure in the beginning. It survived it in the summer. I didn't actually do anything but maybe one diatomaceous earth dusting. Um, I just actually, quite honestly, I just gave up on it. I didn't like it, and then when it didn't die, I thought I'd transplant it. But all of a sudden now, it's doing really good. And so, I'm just going to let it keep going. Maybe, eventually, this failure will become a success. I'm going to let it intertwine just a little bit here. Look at that. That looks to be pollinated. The bloom hasn't come off right there, but it's made a thicker. Here's another way you can tell when things got pollinated. This um, little stem right here gets a lot thicker than it was. Like then, say, it's friends. Sometimes they have twin friends, and that one didn't. This one looks good, so that means it's probably set fruit, which would be awesome because I think big um, a big part of my failure with this plant was not having pollinators over here. And look what I just found. That is beautiful. That's what they look like, a little Antigua eggplants. They're not purple. They're sort of a white and purple um, mingled colors, you know, like, like somebody took a paintbrush on there. And that looks great. Here's the back side of it. And I had the same exact problems with its brother, or cousin, I guess you better. Uh, this is the Ping Tongue, which is the Japanese version. This one throws the really long uh, eggplant fruit. And I don't know that those have been pollinated. I got one here and one over here. Um, this one almost was totally eaten to death, so he's only at about 15 to 18 inches high now. I said she. I should say she instead of he, huh? Um, this one's a little over two feet. But, again, I'm just having the doggone hard time with them. So, I, I don't think they're happy here. But maybe I should just say those stink bugs or kissing bugs, whatever they were, uh, were a huge source of growth issues. And they are gone now. So, I don't see any. The base, nothing. Um, they look really well at this point. There's no damage on these leaves. Pretty happy about that. Uh, I don't know if they need more <clears throat> different type of soil. We're quite acidic over here. Don't know if they preferred more irrigation. Maybe the dappled light got to them. I don't know, but at least we're finally starting to go now. This one's a little higher, and it sees more morning sun. So, potentially, that's a sun issue. I don't know. Look, there's another one. Starting to come out. Hmm. Awesome. So, all of a sudden, this guy's turning on. <sighs> Go figure. Sometimes I don't have those answers. Like you, I'm just still learning. And if you know the answer, <laughs> please do share. But that's my eggplants. Okay, so look at this. This is Chinese red noodle bean. This. This is what I'm specifically talking about. Um, grew amazing here this spring. I mean, so much, I, we didn't even want to see another red noodle bean. Now, the only thing I can think of is Nearly every one of these is dead. Uh, and I don't see, like I tug on these, 
I don't see where I had nematode or chinch bug damage because these are still rooted in pretty good. Um, which I guess they could come back, but they look pretty dead. Dead as dead. Um, I'm thinking that's just by heat. I don't really see where bugs got them. I think heat's it's ridiculously hot. They're not meant to do China, I think it would be a different zone than Florida. So, anyhow, I could definitely restart those noodle beans again this winter. Um, over here, I have the black runner beans. Again, I had trouble. They're, they went on up. Maybe that's a runner bean right there. Well, that one's still alive, but boy, he's not happy either. Not happy at all. This streamlined runner bean put out blooms, but it won't set fruit. Not happy at all. And what is this? I don't know. I think this is going to be a black coat runner bean right here. Not doing great. But look, it's re-putting out new babies at the base. So, I don't know what's going on. I have to say that this whole trellis thing, I don't know why I'm having such pollination, bee issues, or growth issues. I don't know if it's just lack of irrigation or what, but this whole area seems much more difficult than the other sections of garden. <clears throat> I'm seeing a lot more challenges and uh, failures over here, except for in the area of flowers. I'm doing great in that area with um, zinnias and even some lemon bee balm. I had nasturtiums down there and I collected some seed and put one up here. This is a peanut butter tree. And that's doing okay. He's um, just coming out of his shock of transplant from last month and I see new growth is coming on there. That's awesome. And this will probably start picking up once it cools down. But by golly, this whole area is really kind of a mess. Yeah, I have plenty of plants in here to draw the pollinators in. I have some pineapple. This is a volunteer, something that was here when the woods were here. Here's another pineapple right there. And a pineapple there. And I put in two more pineapples right here on each side of the, the trellis so that'll look kind of pretty coming in but again such a huge challenge um, the potato vine was not helpful that's a lot of what you see that's dead up there so pulled all those off collected all those little baby potatoes before they got on the ground and seeded um, so I have a lot to rethink and redo over here. Oh, before I forget, okay, so let's we'll include this. This is cinnamon basil. It has this really cool top to it. I notice all of them have it. Not sure why it's doing that. But, hey bud, my dog's right there. Um, why do some get to be over a foot tall when others are still just struggling down here. I don't know. I have the same thing going on with my sweet basil. That could be just shade and this one gets a little bit more sun. This is my miracle fruit tree and it just got done with a nice little growth season. It's it's still um, coming out of its transplant shock too. Oh. Buddy's trying to dig a hole where I can fall. Thank you, hon. I appreciate all that challenges in my life. Uh, this is lemon bee balm. So we did transplant that. It seems to be doing good. It seems to be actually taking off. Uh, speaking of talking about failures, don't ever get a puppy and let them see you gardening. <laughs> Buddy, really not that's not good. Buddy! Because he'll learn to love dirt, just like my buddy. Oh my goodness. He's such a mess. Um, okay. These St.
spirit. A oily beans. Um, yeah, got eaten up by the bugs. This heat was just too much. I do have a little bitty bean right there. You see that? I've got a couple almost made it. But I think I'm just going to lose the whole thing, which means I'm just going to lose it because I don't have any more of those seeds. My purple rose is still hanging in there. Uh, coming back from near death. I see we got a bloom. This has been actually a uh, success, not a failure, because I've not ever done really good with rose transplants, and this one did actually work. I just stayed at it over and over and over again with lots of water every day. Don't water the leaves, water the roots. Water at the base. As a final footnote, uh, these roselle here are doing amazing. Oh my goodness, that's falling over. This one too. Uh, I guess it's time to pick today. So, this one, as you already saw, it broke. And it's about to break up there too. So, what did I do right here that I didn't do right over on this one? Well, it's still speculation. This one's not completely dead. It's just not doing as great. See the leaves are kind of bicolored. Um, that's not a different variety. They, these are all from the same seed pack. It has only a couple pieces of fruit on it. So, what is it that's different? It has more sun. Roselle loves sun. This one actually has less sun. These three over here beyond the fruit tree have less sun. So that's not what it is. Um, uh, it could be there's a lot of roots over here from this tree that's under here was hit by lightning. It could be there's some soil damage um, or extra roots in its way. I'm not sure about that. Maybe it was just a weaker seed. My other thought is that my only last real thought is that right over here I put in a ton of mulch from when we had our oak tree ground up. The soil over here is heavily mulched with a super high nitrogen uh, content in it. And maybe that's what's feeding it. Of course, you know, everything's feeding nitrogen, but like it's super high, more than normal. And that might be what it's loving. Maybe it's like a corn. So one can only speculate. But these three over here certainly look way different that, than that poor little guy over there. Um, fruit tree's doing good. I simply plucked off the bad leaves um, that I was having an issue with earlier this year, uh, the, earlier this summer. And to be specific, it looks great. It held on to most of its fruit in spite of winds from hurricane. Um, these are ruby red grapefruits. These are some Meyer lemons grafted. It has one branch right here grafted on. And so um, I had more fruit up top, but uh, this is the only guy up here that survived. Um, looks good otherwise. We did put some stability with it for the wind. Uh, but other than that, it looks really, really good and healthy. So I'm pretty happy about that. Uh, well, I'll, before I forget about it, some blackberries. Uh-oh, what's happening to you? That just started. Uh, but maybe that's because, like, we've had no rain all week. And I did not water over here. Uh, but the rest of it looks pretty good. This is, um... One is this? This is Chester Blackberry in its first year. So it's still just a little baby. Uh, I've given it this new trellis. I've given both of them a new trellis. And uh, let me come over here and show you the Navajo Blackberry. Now it has some Zinnia friends that came with it accidentally. But um, I have all the Navajo in here and it's different variety, different kid, okay? And it's growing and I see it's already got new growth on it just since I put it in. So, what blueberries do, 
is they like to throw the runners the first year, and the second year that you have them, then they throw the fruiting vines. At least that's what I've learned on YouTube. And so this is year one. They came to me in May, I believe, as teeny tiny, probably four to five inch long seedlings. They came from Baker Creek. And I just placed an order. I got three. The Triple Crown died right away. Uh, that was my fault in, of air, lack of irrigation. And so anyhow, oh, uh, these two were making it. They were been in the ground for a while, and I just have now given them a place to run. And they seem to be doing well. Okay, so who's this guy I keep stepping over? Okay, let me tell you real quick. This is the Florida Cranberry or the red leaf cranberry, the red leaf hibiscus, the red shield hibiscus or cranberry or something. It's got like five names and I, I think people even make up their own name, could have as many seven names. Um, but this will also make the little calyxes, which are the red dots, the red fruit over there. This will make calyxes too, but I think it just fruits a little bit cooler and it's recognizing Hey, I'm a Florida plant. I know not to do it until Florida winter really shows up. So it's pretty smart that way. Uh, these leaves are excellent. They, I come out here and nibble on them because I just crave. Probably there's vitamin C in them and I crave that. And the little thing I learned from this guy is that if you watch the base of it, every so often it'll throw little shoots down at the base. You grab those she shoots and you put them in water or just put them into another bit of dirt and you will have all of a sudden baby was uh not for sale this other baby florida hibiscus or cranberry hibiscus transplants let me show you those okay these were the little shoots i was telling you about and they were little they were like this was the size of the biggest one and then i had two smaller ones and then um yeah, I just literally threw them in dirt and let them go. And these guys are just beautiful. They're even putting out some really nice extra growth in the center. I already gave one away to a friend. And I may put some more. My husband and I, we were talking about put, putting these extra ones up front. We just really like the pop of color. And we're going to probably rearrange our flower beds in front of the house. And we'll probably put these there. So that's pretty cool. So here's some successes, uh, at least at this point. So the Waltham butternut squash is hanging in there really good with the dappled light and this heat. I'm really impressed. A tiny bit of bug pressure, nothing we can't deal with here. And uh, keep on going. This is Armenian cucumber. We did have bug pressure on these. Of course, I think these were here a little sooner. Could be wrong on that but um it's hanging in there starting to throw out its little side guys and i suspect as soon as we get a little cool snap and these bugs decide to go away that we're going to start seeing the blooms so i can already see them just a little bit wanting to come out they're real close this along with the kagoma bean which it also bloomed this is a nice success because uh, I only had four seeds, but I got a Kagoma bean out of uh, the one bloom so far. Well, actually, I'll probably get two, looks like. Um, this is really, in my mind, a rare bean that I have not seen before. Uh, so the Kagoma is doing really well. I think I had two or three, and this is the only bean that I see that's succeeding. Um, but that's okay, I'll take it. Over here, these are dark cucumbers. They're the little short, squatty ones. I only have males so far. These I will need to hand pollinate if I can't attract some bees in here. But these are awesome little um, pickling or, you know, just you can eat them out here in the yard. I love them. Um, they, yeah, I was going to say, I hesitated. I don't want to discourage you, but do watch for um, bugs to go on them and destroy them. Uh, 
but heading into winter, I think it will be better. But in the spring, the bugs do tend to like the fruit. This is Parisian pickling cucumber, and this is like a gherkin size. Again, boys so far, but it's doing pretty good. I'm pretty impressed with it overall. Uh, I only put a couple seeds out. I just got rid of the packet is what I did. I just threw them over here because uh, I thought the eggplant were going to be gone. And so they're neighbors, and they will definitely climb higher. As you can see, they're almost the same height, this, this eggplant leaf. And they'll go all the way up here. And we'll just see what we get out of them. It'll be interesting. Uh, no loss if I didn't get anything. Over here is Kish White, which is also an experiment for me. Um, I only had a few uh, seeds that I put out. I might have more in the packet. Um, this is my best one so far. And that's the size of my hand. Um, this one, okay, that's the next best. And here it looks like a fail, just not strong enough. So uh, I don't know if I didn't plant more, if they just died, but yeah, that's my Kish White. And it's probably not loving this heat either. Who is, right? I'm just dying to have it nice and cool again, I have a fall and a winter. Uh, so I'll keep you updated as those progress. Not really success or a failure yet, the jury's still out. Just an itty bitty update on my bananas. There's some. The rack you last saw. Doing really good. But then this happened. I have another wreck coming out here right now. I was not expecting this one at all. I thought we were done for the year. That's fantastic. I got to make notes of that. Which leads me to my last point, which is always keep a little calendar set aside just for your garden because it is super important to know when you planted things when they popped up germinated when they fruited and um, any little notes you can put in the side margin for that so thank you if you stayed with me this long until the next one in this series thank you for joining me